what's up everybody uh do i look dazed and confused there's my my green screen <laughs> if you were watching me live last night you you saw that but i don't do these kind of videos too much anymore but every once in a while uh there's something that i i want to bring up or i want to talk about as i look around on youtube and especially in what we call the guitar community and if you look there are thousands and thousands upon thousands of guitar channels and guitar player channels and musicians out there and bands and, and all kinds of stuff and there's something that that comes up quite often is the debate about gear and gearheads and musicians. Now, most musicians, if you play and you've learned to play an instrument, you're somewhat of a gearhead. But you would fall into the category maybe of you're a musician first, where the playing the instrument and the playing the music comes before the the gear like you'll 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 get the gear that you need to get by with you they don't go crazy you won't go crazy then there's the other side where the guys that just they got to have tons and tons and tons of gear and they got to have the best gear and they got to have the most gear and they have to know everything about it and you know they're they're gearheads and then a lot of times, they're not even really concerned that much with playing. They're, they're just in it because they love guitars, they love gadgets, they love musical equipment, whatever. They, and, you know, this, this spills over into car enthusiasts, gun enthusiasts. They, they all have this in common. But what, what you find with music is... You get out what you put in. And I've always been a lazy guitar player. And it, it shows. I, I've always been the kind of guitar player that I will, I will learn something to put something over, whether it be in a band or it be by myself. But I don't overdo it. It's not overdone. That's why I never became, you know, a great theory teacher or uh even good at theory i know some theory i i man i've you know i've forgotten a lot but you you end up playing at the level of what you have put into it over a period of time now i'm 61 years old i first started playing the guitar when I was around eight or nine, I started taking lessons at about 10 and took guitar lessons for a while and then became self-taught and taught by my friends and taught by my brother and taught by, you know, other people that I played in bands with that were just trading licks and, and learning what we knew. Now, we didn't have YouTube. We had books and recordings and television. Television was almost useless, other than you might get to see a glimpse of your favorite musician or star occasionally on the TV. But you couldn't really learn anything from them. Books, magazines were probably the best visual that we had. We'd go buy music books, we'd buy song books, fake books, whatever. Uh, guitar Player Magazine, Guitar World Magazine, things like Circus Magazine, Cream Magazine, stuff like that. Then, of course, there were recordings. That's where you heard the music, and that's where you dropped the needle on the track and tried to find out, you know, listen to what are they playing. That was how we ear trained. That was how we played. Now, uh, people on the internet that will take a lot of heat like uh, Rick Beato he, he takes a lot of heat because he gets really technical he gets really deep into it 
the thing is, he knows what the hell he's talking about. He's not making it up. He's not speaking from a place of what he doesn't know. Okay, he has the experience, he has the knowledge, he's, he's studied, he's done the training. And a, a lot of times, you know, people, me included, will make fun of that because it's like, oh my God, I just, I can't listen, you know, because it goes on and on and on and on. The truth of the matter is the guy knows what he's talking about. Then you have the other side of people that, they just, they talk, and they they buy gear, and they have gear, and they talk about gear, and they'll get something, and it's like, I bought this, came in the mail today, and now they're a freaking expert, and they're going to tell you what the deal is, how it is, and you know, Sometimes it's almost laughable because even at, at my level of playing, I've been playing long enough that I know what's what. I know what I want. I know what I need. I know what's good. I know what's necessary. I also know what's not necessary. I know what's bad. I know what's overpriced. I know what hype is. So you get these these people speaking from a place of authority about something that they don't really have the authority to do. And it, if they would just say, you know, show the thing, show the guitar, show the piece of gear and tell what they like about it or, you know, that they like it or that they don't like it. And usually when they don't like it, it's because they're confused by it or they can't make it sound good because they couldn't make anything sound good, really. They can't make it sound good, so they, they give it, you know, a down vote. And if, if you look at someone... You can usually pick their their level of playing up, you know, pretty quick. Which is really irrelevant because I don't care at what level somebody plays, as long as they're they're honest about it and honest about what they do. Now I had to make a jump cut edit because right here is where I, I forgot to mention that, that a lot of times this this kind of stuff, you know, to somebody who's been playing a long, long time and has seen a lot of things come and go, some of this can actually be kind of insulting. And I'm not talking about guys like, like Philip McKnight. Obviously, Philip is an expert on gear. He's an expert on guitars. He's been in the business. It's what he does. Again, we're not talking about guys like Rick Beato, who is a pro in the business. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. I'm not talking about guys like Glenn Fricker in the recording studio. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Whether you like it or not, these guys have the qualification to do what they're doing, to talk about what they're talking about. And I try to talk about what I'm qualified to do, and that's play classic rock, country, and oldies in a cover band. That's that's what I do, you know. So that I had to jump and put that in there and, and kind of make that clarification. Now I want to talk about something that is kind of this was a segue into this that one of the most inspiring and greatest guitar players, musicians, self-taught musicians that I've ever had the privilege to be around and play with is my wife, Linda Dana. She started playing the bass in her mid-50s. And 
with a little bit of help from me, and sometimes, you know, me getting frustrated with her and, and you know, uh, getting frustrated and, and just, you know, leaving her to her own ways, she found a way. And through her, her dedication to playing and her perseverance, she has become the most steady playing band member I've ever, ever in my life associated with. And that's not just because I'm married to her. Other people that have played with her will say the same thing. Uh, Fred, our drummer, I'm sure would agree to this. Jerry, our other guitar player, would agree to this. Former band members would agree to this. Uh, my brother and, and people that know her and people that she's played with admire her for what she has accomplished as a musician and what she's been able to do. And I, I would uh, implore you to look at her and look at her example and her amount of dedication. She plays the bass two to three hours every day and not going over these stupid songs that we play in this cover band. She'll be in her studio, I call it, her music room, playing along to, you know, I've heard her play Rush. She'll be playing along to the Allman Brothers. She'll play stuff that this band, our band, is never going to do because we're not capable of pu pulling that off. But she's in there doing that, and she did this taught herself. Uh, she's not a gearhead. All she ever wanted was one guitar, and it was a Fender Precision Bass in Sunburst with a tortoiseshell pickguard. I don't know why. But that was the guitar that she sought. That's the guitar that she got. That's the guitar that she plays. She's got her Aerodyne and a few other straggler basses laying around that she doesn't really care a flying F about. All, it's that one guitar. You know, her biggest concern in gear is a good chord, clean new strings. She uses elixirs and an amp that sounds decent. And it's usually either an Ampeg or a Fender amp. Well, it's always an Ampeg or a Fender amp with her. She doesn't care about anything else. She doesn't care about pedals. She doesn't care about, you know, fancy recording stuff. All she cares about is the guitar, the strings, the chord, a good tuner. She, she insists on having a good tuner and a decent amp. And that's all she cares about. And the rest of it is all about playing. It's sitting down with the instrument and being able to play. And it shows. If, if, you, if you watch our band videos, the least likely person to make a mistake is Linda because she's prepared. And you've, you've never seen her make a big deal about it or, or brag about it or, you know, well, she won't. So I have to do it for her. But I, I would just leave that as the example to others. And I'm no example other than a blabbermouth on YouTube that has a band. You know, how much longer really will I be able to do this at, at my age and with some of the things that we face uh, on a daily basis? How much longer will I be able to do this, really? You know, it, I don't know. I, I would guess, even with everything else, that, that Linda will probably outlast me at it and be able to do it longer. And it, it'll, it'll be sad when it comes to an end, but everything has to end. And I'm thankful for the time that we were able to do it. But, but I would just suggest that on, on YouTube or in public or whatever else you're doing, be honest about it. You know, 
I, I try to be as honest as I can about it. I don't play things I can't play. I don't claim to be able to play things I can't play, and I don't claim to know things I don't know. And I don't generally, I don't think I talk about shit that I don't know about. But I do know about this one thing, and that is uh, the most dedicated musician I've ever had the pleasure to work with and know, and that's my wife, Linda. All right. That's that. That's just it. I, I kind of had to get that off my chest because I've been watching a lot of stuff on YouTube lately that just makes me go, oh man, <laughs> you know, you people, you really have no clue. And, and to the people that support us and to the guys that I do talk to and, and hang out with on YouTube, you guys are all great. Cheers to you. And uh, just everybody have a wonderful day.